This is Twit. So first of all, I should uh, talk about a little bit about Artemis. Uh, we're not on Mars. We're on the moon. Uh, there is lots of science in here. I think it's. I think one of the things, if people read both books, they'll say, oh, we know a little bit about Andy Weir. He loves science, and he loves the idea of solving problems with science, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, problem solving and, and science, uh, science faction. Science faction. I like it. I didn't come up with that, but I've hard, seen it. It's yeah. hard science sci-fi. Uh, and this is much more of a sci-fi book. So I guess what I was starting to say is that The Martian is is really, it's, it's, it's science fiction in the sense that there's a guy on Mars and we aren't yet on Mars, but it's, it's kind of very credible, believable yeah. NASA type um, stuff. I mean, it's not, not way out there with ray guns or anything. Right. Um, and well, believe it or not, Artemis is actually more true to real science than the Martian is, but it takes place further in the future. Martian takes place in the 2030s. Artemis takes place in the 2090s. Um, it's actually, you could argue, <laughs> it's a little silly, but you could argue that it's economic fiction. <laughs> uh, you know, it is. I, and that, but if you say that, people are going to read it. So people aren't going to read it. Don't but, say that. No, but the only, it, I'll, I'll say it this way. The main conceit of Artemis, the main suspension of disbelief necessary in terms of the science is that the price to low Earth orbit has been driven down a lot by competition in the, you know, commercial space industry. I think but that we're seeing that happen right now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I did a whole thing. I, I actually wrote a paper on it that I'll that I'll well, it's not a it's not a paper you as in peer reviewed thing, but I I wrote an essay on why I think uh, on w how low I think commercial space travel will be driven down, uh, the price to low Earth orbit will be driven down by a uh, commercial competition, and that that those numbers are what I based um, Artemis's economy on. Yeah, and uh, and so one of the so the idea, and I, I don't again, I will. There will be no spoilers on this. All of this you can figure out if, if you uh, just look at the cover, probably. Uh, although it looks a little bit like an eclipse, I think the timing is very. Yeah, that was cool. Well, actually, I wanted, I wanted, uh, I had suggested to Random House, hey, can we uh, release on August twenty first? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then we'd be releasing this book about the moon during the eclipse and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, that'd be cool. But no. <laughs> it's a fall It's a fall release because that's when the – see, you should be honored. That's when the big books come out. Okay. Right? Okay. Good. You, that's, yeah. that's when the big books come out. This is going to be the Christmas, you know, b buying season. I th be on shelves for the Christmas uh, season. That's right. Yep. I do feel like um, – you and a few other people, I didn't include Ernie Klein, are doing a lot to keep people reading. Because young people especially, I think, will really enjoy these. Not young like 12, young like, you know, in their late teens, early 20s, will enjoy this. And it might get them reading a little more, which I think is great. Uh, possibly. I mean, it's not like, uh, well, I can't speak for Ernie, but it's not like I... Um Set out to go like I'm going to get people yeah, reading. No, I it's know. Like, no, this is just this, <laughs> this is what I do. This ain't reading Rainbow here. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I understand.